Hello, this is Billy Core from the Carolina Circle Mall Wiki. Today is um, Tuesday, February the 28th of 2017, and I'm back. <laughs> you guys miss me? Um, been an interesting month um, that I've been away. Um, a lot of reasons for this hiatus. Um, one reason is um, anxiety issues, um, which I plan to make a separate video about, um, as well as the fact that my Packard Bell sleeper, which was my main machine, died on me. <laughs> That's right, folks, it died. Um, the motherboard went out on it. Um, so, thankfully, um, I still had two years left um, on the warranty, and I was able to get it RMA'd. Um, According to Gigabyte, they're going to replace it, and I should have it back in sometime in March, I, I would think. So um, hopefully I can get that computer back up and running, and um, that machine was my the machine I did most of my video editing on, so... But thankfully I've um, realized that I can just... I've been able to set up my laptop to do video editing now, so that's better than nothing. So... I'm back, folks, whether you like it or not, and I hope you liked the new intro, by the way. Um, big thanks to Jay Wakefield of Video Sound Frontier for um, composing the music. I know I wouldn't have to be, be able to do that in a million years. <laughs> anyway, on to the subject of this video. Um, what we're looking at here is a um, Power Macintosh G3 from 1998. Um, Believe it or not, I've had this computer for about four years now. I found it at Value Village um, for $7.17 in the early part of the year 2013. But it didn't work. Um, it was missing the RAM and the ROM card. But thankfully, um, YouTube user Sansui350A was kind enough to donate a brand new motherboard for this system, complete with the ROM card. I was able to get it up and running the other week, and um, I now have a wonderfully working classic Macintosh. Um, I had been using this Macintosh LC right here, which I still need to make a video of, but a few problems with it. Um, not really, the, can't really fault it for it, but it's um, a little too old, a little too slow uses SCSI everything, and lacks a CD-ROM drive, so it's really, really difficult to get um, s files and software onto this thing, so that's going to be put to the side for now. But this machine, on the other hand, uses IDE, uses IDE hard drive, IDE CD-ROM. I've actually um, got it running off of a 16 gigabyte compact flash card. I'm using one of my... Um, Expansion slot adapters, can't really see it, but um, but I'm able to somewhat get files over to it um, simple enough using this um, really, really yellowed um, ADB keyboard and this um, cool looking um, vintage Macintosh mouse. And um, a few problems with this system, unfortunately, um, mainly um, um, cosmetic problems. Um, it is very yellowed and the plastic has gotten extremely brittle. I mean, um, you can't even touch it without something breaking on it. <laughs> and um, the power button um, is missing due to that problem. Um, power button snapped off due to the brittleness of it. So I have to turn it on using the um, keyboard button. And I'm missing the um, drive tray for the CD-ROM drive, so it just flops around um, like crazy in here, and you have to have it in a certain position to get it to actuate the eject button. But so far, it seems to be okay now. Um, I do want to get a much nicer um, vintage Mac, though. Um, a lot of people are probably going to talk me out of this, but my dream vintage Macintosh would be a um, Bondi Blue um, iMac G3. Because that's what, um, I remember using those in the media center at our um, elementary school in the late 90s, early 2000s, and 
even though I, I've always been a die-hard PC Windows version uh, person, something about those G3 iMacs really appealed to me, and I've kind of wanted one for my very own ever since. And plus, I kind of want something with a USB port on it, make um, transferring files a little bit simpler. So this Macintosh here is not for show, it's not here to look good, it's here just to work. So, um, without further ado, let's get the tripod set up and um, take a better look at it. Okay, I've um, got the tripod set up. Yes, this is a very inappropriate monitor I'm using on this system, but it's all I got. And plus, you know, with you with one of those VGA adapters for Macs, um, you can really go a long way with them. So I'm very grateful for those. <laughs> and uh, I have to realign the CD-ROM. It looks like oh, we'll worry about that when we get there. Okay, let's go ahead and power it up. Takes a while for the monitor to get um, get its head together. All right, we're running Mac OS 8.6. Apologies for the um, refresh lines. We can't do much about it, unfortunately, on a system like this. Alright, remember my date and time, that's good. Um, it's got a fresh um, battery in it. By the way, I'm not going to take this computer apart on camera because I will never be able to get it back together again. <laughs> Alright, um... Just check one thing on here. Uh, yeah, it's not going to let me um, adjust the refresh rate. Might be able to do it on the um, BGA adapter, but oh, we'll not worry about that right now. But right now, let's go to about this computer. We got 128 megabytes of RAM. Running Mac OS 8.6. Sorry, folks. We'll go to Apple System Profiler. Power Macintosh G3, running at 300 megahertz. The um, original motherboard that was in here had a 266 megahertz G3, so when I replaced the motherboard, I guess I got a little bit of an upgrade, which is always nice. I really don't have a whole lot installed on here. Um, this computer does bring back a few memories, though, of um, the Max we used in elementary school. Let's take a look at what I do have on here. I've got Microsoft Office 98 on here, which is pretty much the uh, Macintosh equivalent of Office 97. I'll go ahead and open up Microsoft Word. I always love how on um, the Macintosh version of this, it has a um, a um, compact Mac as the office assistant instead of that um, paper clip. <laughs> Let's see if we can type something up here. <laughs> Go ahead and quit out of that. Whoa! <laughs> A little loud there. Uh, also got um Claris Works, which was a pretty popular um 
off a suite for uh, Macintosh computers back in the 90s. They were also on PCs, but they um, saw most use on Macs. This is version 5.0 from 1997. Word processor. I don't know what I was doing there. <laughs> and um, you can't have a 90s Macintosh without kid picks. This is a a program I use both at home on our Packard Bell and at school on the Macs there. I'm not sure if this was the same version or not. This is Kid Pick Studio Deluxe. I'm just going to switch it to 256 color mode. Paint a picture. Oh yeah, here come the memories, folks. <laughs> This has always been one of my favorite um, designs here you can use. It kind of mirrors everything. <laughs> I remember um, in second grade we um, used this on one of our Macs at school to draw um, road maps. Which was fun, obviously, for a, for a weirdo like me. And of course, the best part of Kid Picks. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Huh? Oh yeah, and there's a the hidden picture. Again, folks, I am so sorry about the refresh rate. I wish I could do something about it. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be, but there you go. Alright, um... Now... Back in um, 2011, I did a video where I um, unboxed a um, copy of SimCity 2000 for Macintosh. It was something my aunt found at a Goodwill. And I still have it, but I've never been able to install it or anything because I've never really owned a classic Mac before. Well, um, I figure since um, I now have a working one, after almost six years, let's go ahead and finally try this out. So, let's bring it over here. And um, open her up. We've got two discs here. This is Lazy Game Review approved. And see if we can install it. Now this system is a little bit newer than um, this version of software, but I guess we'll be fine. And I have tested the floppy drive on here. It does work. So here's disk number one. Never read me? We told you not to read this file! <laughs> I miss the days when um, software companies had a sense of humor. <laughs> that, is, that is gold right there, folks. Absolute gold. Sound down a little bit. 
need to find a folder to put it in. Copyright 1991. I did try to run SimCity Classic on here, but it needed um, like 16 color mode, but I wasn't able to access 16 color mode on here. It might be because of that VGA adapter. I'd probably need to adjust some dip switch settings. We may wind up having the same problem with this. I don't know. I guess we didn't need that second disc. Let's see if we can open it. We can! Yes! <laughs> Six years I can finally use this. Put in our name. Let's start a new city. Well, let's call it Mac Land. Uh, Sunday, January 4th, 1900. Wow, well, it runs great on here. music too. Uh, take a sit down there and let's build a plant of power. Mm. I love that sound. And build some roads. This game really does work well on here. Build some water um, facilities. And give these power. <laughs> build a park, why not? <laughs> I have always been a fan of um, the SimCity games, by the way. My favorite version of SimCity is probably um, a version not many of you um, care for, and that would be SimCity 4. I would I would play the heck out of that game as a teenager on my Dell Dimension 2350. It ran like total garbage on there because of the um, onboard Intel graphics that computer had, but I, I learned to live with it and I love that game and I still do. Alright, we'll build some police here. <laughs> Speed things up to Cheetah. What good that's doing. <laughs> Starting to take a little bit of shape. 
build a railroad. Build some homes there. Boston and Rex Subways. Well, good for them. I prefer Jersey Mike's, though. Put a little bit more commercial over here. budget. Okay, I better stop playing. I'm gonna... If I don't stop now, I won't stop until, um... next month. <laughs> so let's get out of here. Now, there's one thing interesting I want to show off about this. I want to do a comparison of a um, computer game that works with both Windows and Macintosh. You see, back in the 90s, um, you would a lot of times you would buy a computer game from the store, and it would be compatible with both Windows and Macintosh, but each version would a lot of times be a little bit different from the um, other. So, um, we're going to load up a game on my Packard Bell, see how it plays, and then load it up on, on this Macintosh and see how it plays. So, let me fire up the Packard Bell and see what we can do. Alright, to test this, um, we're going to fire up one of my favorite childhood games of all time, probably. The CD-ROM drive will open. Sometimes the drive on this 1510 Supreme likes to stick, but there it goes. I'm going to play a little bit of Fatty Bear's Birthday Surprise. Get your auto-run screen. Music sounds really good. It's like we've always heard it. Good night, Kayla. Good night, Dad. Tomorrow's my birthday. And Mom and Dad did have a big surprise for me. Good night, Fatty Bear. You be good. <sighs> I love you, Fatty Bear. There's a lot of work to do before Kayla wakes up. I want to make her a big, beautiful birthday cake. Oh, will she ever be surprised? I'd better get busy, too. I've got a lot of decorating to do. I'm even going to make Kayla a happy birthday sign for her bulletin board. Oh, Gretchen, that sounds wonderful. I need to go to the kitchen and make Kayla's birthday cake. Fatty Bear? Would you like some help making the birthday cake? I'm a heck of a cleaner upper. Oh, yes. Thank you, Matilda Rabbit. That would be nice. And once the intro's done, we get the standard Windows-style um, humongous entertainment um, pointer that's clear when it's um, not on anything clickable and completely white on something that is clickable. Hurry, hurry, all of you. There's so very, very much to do. And to close out of it, you just hit the space bar and click on quit. 
And that's Fatty Bear's Birthday Surprise on a Windows machine. Let's see how it runs on a Macintosh. First of all, I need to show you how I managed to um, get this CD-ROM to eject when the actual eject button won't reach the real one. So um, we'll have to take a, something pointy. Maybe this thing. And stick it in right here. Pull on this, and it's back and aligned. There we go. Now let's see how Fat Fatty Bear runs on a Macintosh. It'll be similar yet different. I can go ahead and tell you that much. Instead of an auto run screen, we get the standard um, Fatty Bear folder. Icon looks different. Ah, I hate that telephone. I don't know why we have it in here. Double click on the Fatty Bear icon. I want to switch to 56 colors. Go ahead. That part's the same. Sound effects are the same. The music. The music is ugh. I mean, it's not bad, but compared to Windows, it's ugh. <laughs> Good night, Kayla. It just doesn't sound as dynamic. It sounds more loose. There's a lot of work to do before Kayla wakes up. I want to make her Bear sounds the same. Cake. Oh, will she ever be surprised? I better get busy too. I've got a lot of decorating to do. I'm even going to make Kayla a happy birthday fun for her bulletin board. Oh, Gretchen, that sounds wonderful. I need to go to the kitchen and make Kayla's birthday cake. Fatty Bear, would you like some help making the birthday cake? I'm a heck of a cleaner upper. Oh, yes. Thank you, Matilda Rabbit. That would be nice. And that's my favorite song, actually, and it sounds horrible. <laughs> I, I can barely even recognize it. Okay, um, another difference here is the cursor. It looks a lot more like it does in the DOS version, except smaller. And it doesn't change color or anything when you have it over something that can be clicked on. And in order to quit, he, I'm doing this, pressing the space bar only pauses it. And instead, what you have to do is hit Command and Q until it OK. So yeah, quite a difference there. Now a lot of um, games that were for both Mac and Windows were pretty identical, but Humongous Entertainment games, no. <laughs> Especially when it came to the music. Alright, I guess um, that'll about do it for this video. Um, it's really not much more to show. But yeah, this is this was the Power Macintosh G3 from 1998. Finally working after owning it for four years now. Until then, this is Billy Core. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The addresses are located in the bottom right corner. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.